Hello everyone. Uh, this time I want to talk about a recent experience I, I had with switching internet, cable, and telephone providers, so telecom. Uh, so we, we thought about it hard and carefully uh, about whether we were going to make the switch. We didn't do this on a whim or anything like that. Uh, that's, you should never make a switch like anything like that on a whim. You should carefully weigh your options. But anyway, here's the reason we switched. We switched from Shaw to TELUS. And we switched because Shaw sucks. That, in a nutshell, Shaw sucks. Uh, it didn't used to be that way, though. Uh, back in the early days when Shaw was actually was first started offering home phone lines and uh, and that sort of thing their service was as good as Telus's and they were competitive or cheaper than Telus for the equivalent services and at that time you couldn't get your television channels from Telus they weren't in that game yet uh, so at that point in time, the actual points of competition between Shaw and TELUS were internet access and telephone service. Now, telephone service is about a wash between them. Shaw was actually cheaper at the time for equivalent features, but that kind of goes back and forth over time. Uh, and... You know, some of that was because TELUS was a little bit hamstrung by regulations on actual what they could offer for what price. Okay, so you've got so so you've got tele, telephone and internet service, uh, which you could pick either provider, and then you've got cable TV, which you generally want if you want to watch any amount of stuff reliably, because you can't just stick up an antenna. This was before the forced digital transition, actually. So you couldn't just stick up an antenna and just uh, pick up your channels in most areas. Even in the big cities, there was only a limited number of channels. And a lot of times what you wanted to watch was not on at a convenient time. Now remember, this was in the awkward days when VCRs, video cassette recorders, were not really popular anymore. They were falling out, yet PVRs hadn't quite caught on. And this was also at the awkward stage when cable television was switching from pure analog signals to digital signals. Now, when switching from the analog to digital signals meant that uh, you couldn't plug your VCR in and record shows anymore. And that created some resistance, and of course. Uh, but eventually the digital thing did improve things on average because it meant you could have more channels in the same spectrum space. And even on a cable wire, there's limited spectrum space. Even at that point in time, uh, we, we had chosen to go with Shaw for all three at that point for convenience, for one bill for all three things. And there was a substantial bundling discount. So that, uh, that made the decision a lot easier. And at the time, TELUS was having some issues of their own uh, with customer service and a few things like that. So, you know, there were reasons. Uh, now, fast forward a few years, uh, and Shaw it starts offering their... Uh, gate, their PVR scheme and their, their uh, gateway boxes and so on and later on. So, uh, okay, that's great. And TELUS has their optic TV coming, coming along. And so there's some competition starting up, though initially TELUS's offering was, well, crap. Uh, they, they had limited offerings. Uh, insiders at TELUS would say that their gear was terrible, uh, that it almost, like, a large not part percentage of the time wouldn't actually work with, with specific, uh, you know, TV brands. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to plug an HDMI in between the two and have it work. So you'd end up 
having this fancy box that can decode high def channels and it have to be connected through the old uh, audio video analog RCA jacks and and not even the component video ones uh, I'm not sure it even had the component video ones so you'd end up having to watch your high def channels standard def even though both the TV and the box should be able to decode it properly uh, now granted I never actually saw this in operation this is just information from insiders at the time uh, I can say that that has improved substantially uh, over the years. So that means basically uh, TELUS got their offering out there and then they didn't sit on their, on their heels and uh, with their thumb up their butt doing nothing. Uh, so, so this is basically what happened. Shaw, they were doing okay, but... Uh, you know, they were uh, updating uh, what was available and so on, but they never forced anyone to upgrade their gear, and they really couldn't get away with that because most people on Shaw would buy their gear instead of renting it or uh, having it included in the service. Uh, and that, uh, that meant that if they came along and said, yep, you have to upgrade your gear, we're not going to support it anymore, people would go... No, we're not going to do that. So they, it was really hard for them to get buy-in. Like even to get get people to switch to digital uh, TV service, which had more channels available and all of that, they actually had to send out digital boxes to people to use. Uh, people just uh, wouldn't switch without some sort of motivation, and. You know, and they couldn't just arbitrarily start moving channels because that would run into potential regulatory problems, and then they start losing customers because, you know, even then Shaw wasn't particularly good at customer communication. Um, <clears throat> so customers didn't really have any bloody idea what was going on, except for those uh, funny contract commercials that uh, you may have seen. Uh, may, may remember, uh, if you're watching from outside of Canada, you may have seen them on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't, search for them. They're kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, other than that, uh, <laughs> you uh, didn't really get much from Shaw. It was just your basic marketing, and that was it. Like, once they made the sale, they never talked to you. They never, they never really attempted to do anything. Now... Uh, Along the way, you know, we, we transitioned to the digital thing, and it was actually, it, it worked nicely, and uh, for the most part. Now, this was also an awkward stage where you could no longer use a, a VCR or a third-party PVR. Uh, so, if you wanted to watch something later, you had to have a PVR from your provider. But these were bloody expensive at the time. Uh, so you'd be looking at hundreds of dollars to get the PVR option on a digital box or something like that. And that wasn't really going to fly. Like, we weren't going to do that. So, uh, and I shouldn't admit this, but at the time, the BitTorrent network got a pretty good workout because while I could watch the shows when they were on, I couldn't time shift them to when I was actually available to watch it. So I would find if I missed it, I would end up having to download it off of BitTorrent just so I could watch the episode. As this was also before the major networks and so on would have their on-demand offering. So if you missed the show, you could go into on-demand and watch it that way. So, uh, you know, things were starting to improve at, at that time. Um, you know, a little bit into the digital uh, game, uh, the on-demand stuff started to actually uh, be, well, useful, uh, you know, functional. Uh, then along the way, we, uh, we decided, yeah, we really, you know, PVR would be nice, and, we, and Shaw was advertising their gateway systems, which was basically you uh, have a PVR thing and set top boxes and uh, several tuners in the PVR, and then you can, you know, 
the whole pause and rewind, etc. Live TV, you can pause it one room, start it up in the next room, um, record shows, uh, watch on demand content, all of that that jazz. And generally, you know, that worked reasonably reasonably well. Now the gateway systems system when we got it. Uh, it was a several hundred dollar uh, hit when we did it, but it worked really, really well initially. Uh, in fact, it was absolutely brilliant, uh, for, uh, you know, for the first uh, eight, nine months, something like that, uh, whatever it was. I don't remember when we signed up with it actually now. But the first while, it was absolutely brilliant. Uh, the picture was great. Uh, it, you know, the, it was generally as good as what we had before, or potentially better. And occasionally there'd be the odd glitch, but you didn't. You expect that. You know, occasionally you're going to have a glitch in a broadcast or or whatever. You 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 don't know where where that's going to come from or why or whatever. It all it takes a bit of interference at the wrong time. But over the past. Oh, I'd say eight months. The quality of the television service steadily declined, and with a few blips even lower. Okay, uh, in the spring we had consistent, consistent station dropouts, things like that, uh, which turned out to be poor signal in the area. Um, and in one case, uh, the guy came out to troubleshoot, said, yeah, the signal is a little bit iffy. Oh, and the, and the guy that did the uh, install and the, your most, you know, the last guy that did the install in your uh, cable boxes messed up the wiring. I'm like, well, why was it working in the first place? Anyway, uh, so, the, the, you know, basically that we had an incompetent installer. When we started out with two TVs, added a third, so we got a third set-top box, and uh, the installer came out, configured it, all that jazz. Okay, great. But then, but he made a hash of the wiring, so when the uh, guy came to fix, check on things, why we were having trouble, he fixed up the wiring. But it was still iffy, and apparently it was due to physics, and temperatures and signal strengths and, and it was somewhat plausible uh, it, you know the, that it would be an issue somewhat but it shouldn't have been an issue for long uh, sure a sudden change in the weather could affect that sort of thing and you know, I, I could see there being glitches but I wouldn't expect that to last for weeks uh, they know there's an issue they should have all their trucks out there fixing it if they have to go and physically adjust anything. And I don't believe that in any of the newer areas they have to physically adjust the uh, gains on the various junction points. I don't believe they actually do. So, you know, there may be some excuse there. Uh, but then it was reasonably good through the summer. Uh, this was a problem back in the spring last year. Through the summer it was reasonably good and then but it was steadily getting worse. There was more pixelation, more blockiness, uh, all of that jazz. It was just getting worse. And it's to the point where anything that had any substantial amount of motion in it would pixelate and or de-block or whatever the blazes they call that. I'm calling it pixelation, but uh, it would... It, it, the signal would degrade. Uh, now, I suspect that a lot of that was due to overcompression on the channels. Now, whether that's at the source, the channel source, on the feed, or Shaw themselves, it's hard to say. Some of them, it may be the channel, but given the prevalence of it across so many channels, including local channels, it almost certainly was largely caused by Shaw. Now, I also suspect that there were additional issues uh, related to equipment because starting around the spring, uh, spring, early summer, the responsiveness of the gateway system just 
fell apart. It used to be great. Responsiveness was great. You know, if I had to load something remote, that would take longer. But responsiveness was good. But it just, it fell apart. They did a software update on the boxes or something, and everything fell apart. It, it was just horrible, horrible, horrible performance. Like to the point where you'd, you'd be scrolling on the channel guide, and it would be, you press the button to move, and it would, 30, 40 seconds later, it would get around to acknowledging and moving. And even worse, uh, you'd end up with great big empty gaps in the, in the grid, and it would, it would just uh, sit there for minutes or longer and not fill in. So, clearly, they screwed something up in the software, or something is failing in the box, or who the hell knows. But given the uh, slow responsiveness to the remote, it had to be the set-top box that was messed up. Because I highly doubt it was sending all of that stuff back to the central unit to do anything. That would be just stupid. It, it should just be referring to the central unit for, you know, the picture and stuff. Uh, it shouldn't, it should get the guide information and then just serve it locally. That It should be caching that stuff. So, yeah, so it generally is bad and it was getting worse. Fast forward to the fall and we... We went to. We wanted to change some things and reduce our cost, right? Because there was stuff we weren't watching, and so we went through that rigmarole. And it turned out that by removing services, the price went up. That should never, ever, 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 ever happen. Removing services should never, ever make the price go up, ever. This is for all you. Uh, providers of anything out there, if removing services makes the price go up, you have a problem with your pricing. Granted, if you've got somebody with ancient, an ancient contract, that may be a valid reason for the price to change, but we didn't. Our stuff was only a year maybe, something like a year and a half, I can't remember, but it wasn't particularly old. It shouldn't have made that big of a difference. So anyway, we browbeat them into a minimal bundling discount, and that got things so that the bill was at least not higher. Uh, we ended up with slightly faster internet, and then they screwed that up. Uh, they ended up, because we had proper internet speed for what we were subscribed to before we did this, after this, the internet speed dropped in half. What that means is they screwed up the provisioning. So I fought with them for a bit to get them to actually acknowledge there was a problem. They kept insisting, well, you know, if it's busy, no. I know the difference between congestion and a maximum speed. I'm getting a consistent result from your own speed testing program. Oh. So eventually they said, oh yeah, we're going to have to send someone out to look at that. And I'm like, yeah, you can't just check to see if you screwed things up on your side. So it, then I get a phone call the day before the uh, technician was supposed to come out. I'm thinking the technician looked at it and then uh, went, oh, well, is provision wrong? Fixed it. I uh, checked it and yep, sure enough. Now it was giving what it was supposed to. They'd only provisioned half the, the uh, circuit, one, one channel instead of the two that were required. Okay, so there's that. Now we had a week or two without full service. So, you know, I said, look it, you know, you weren't providing the service for, for a week or two. You need to give me a credit for that. And they said, okay, yeah, yeah, they agreed that that was fair. And so they, there would be a credit on the next bill. Next bill came. Instead of a $15 credit, there was a $15 charge. Uh, yeah, no, no. 
for all of you service provider types out there, if if you're giving if you tell someone you're giving them a credit, you do not put a charge on the account. Period. End of story. Don't do that. Period. That was the final straw that really pissed us off. Now, we were already pretty much going to change uh, before that came. Uh, pretty much. Uh, but there was a chance they could have saved everything. Uh, they would have had to cut the price. And they would have had to not screw up the billing. And they missed both opportunities. Uh, they, they didn't give a, a competitive price. And they, they screwed up the billing. And worse yet, I had to argue with them for 20 minutes on the telephone to get them to recognize they screwed up. Yeah, that's just bad. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Now, this is sad because years before, that wouldn't have happened. In fact, we did have a screw-up of that nature years before. And they did issue a credit, and they applied the credit correctly. Uh, so, you know, stupidity. Now, let's fast forward to... to uh, a week ago, uh, actually, less than a week ago, uh, we went down to the TELUS store uh, and arranged a TELUS installation. Now, as luck would have it, they did have an installation appointment quite early. Uh, in fact, you know, we went in on Saturday. We had an installation schedule for Wednesday. That was luck. So, okay, you're not, you can't count on that, but that was luck. Uh, we got good information from the guy in the store. He didn't try to tell us lies. Uh, you know, that may have been luck, but, you know, what I've seen since, uh, I, I'm not sure it is. Uh, we got a telephone call the day before the uh confirming they were coming. I got a telephone call an hour after the guy was supposed to show off and an hour before his window was, was done saying, yeah, we think our guy's running late because we haven't heard from him. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, it turned out the guy showed up about five minutes after his, his scheduled appointment window. That's not bad considering it was a mid, mid-afternoon mid appointment. So uh, his earlier stuff could have run long uh, or traffic and, and, you know, whatever. So it wasn't bad, actually. Okay, so the guy came, he checked things out, he, he went around. Uh, now, of course, I did things to help him, you know, uh, make sure things went relatively smoothly, so that was good. Uh, he went around, uh, he uh, checked the various jacks where everything connected to, he didn't like them, he thought they were crap. He actually replaced the jacks in the wall. Uh, he... Uh, uh, he installed everything uh, where it needed to go. Uh, he plugged everything together. He switched out my Shaw stuff for the TELUS stuff. Uh, and the telephone switch went without a hitch. And I expected that because TELUS has been a telephone company longer than they've been anything else. The internet part went almost without a hitch. Uh, it turns out that the terms of service acceptance page thingy is still stuck on a version of SSL that's too old. Uh, and uh, that is a problem uh, that TELUS does need to address, but they're going to have to sort that out because they're going to have a lot of people that cannot access that page, and the installer is going to have to deal with those complaints. Uh, but once it got past that, everything worked. Their uh, modem router thingy combination, Wi-Fi router and so on, is actually reasonably decent to deal with. The interface is reasonably decent, a little bit odd, but it, it's fine. I, I was able to relatively quickly uh, 
uh, adjust things. So it was uh, announcing the right uh, wireless network name and so on and all of that so that my, uh, my phones and stuff didn't need their configuration changed. Uh, so that was great. Um, and I was able to uh, do a DHCP reservation for my box so that, you know, set up the internal IPs, everything, so that nothing changed. And that worked great. Uh, everything was great. Uh, uh, in fact, I haven't had a problem with the internet uh, since, and I removed some of the extraneous gear I had laying around in there since as well. Uh, so everything's working good. The television stuff took a little longer to set up because I meant going to each TV, setting up the box, t uh, turning everything on, uh, and then activating everything. So, you know, okay, so, so the usual stuff you need to do. But here's the thing. It all just worked. Uh, once it actually synced and, up and, and initialized itself, it all just worked. And quite frankly... That's worth something. It just worked. Granted, the Shaw ones just worked too. But uh, here's another thing. The Telus boxes come with their default set to preserve the aspect ratio. They don't stretch by default. And the setting to change that is in the regular interface. In the Shaw ones, you had to go through a back door thing somewhere, uh, which is weird. Anyway, uh, it just worked. Now, some things weren't ideal. It defaults to 720p, and uh, but they support 1080i. They really should default to 1080i because everything these days does 1080. And I do wish they had 1080p in there because most televisions you buy these days do 1080p, and it's nice for the uh, on-demand type stuff, movies and so on. Anyway, uh, aside that aside, so the installer guy was nice. He did his job, got everything set up, left me a card. If something isn't working, call him directly. Hey, I like that. Uh, now, I don't expect anything to break. It's been working now for 24 hours. So, excellent. Uh, a few points. Um, I had to set up the voicemail thing on the phone. Uh, I forgot to do that yesterday. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I had to look up how. That's fine, too. How often do, I mean, am I going to have to do that? Well, not until the next time I change providers, right? So, not a big deal. I don't particularly like the interface in the uh, voicemail, but it's no worse than any of the others. Um, the television stuff, it take a while to get used to because it's slightly different, but for the most part it's the same, it's the same general thing. Uh, Netflix is built into the optic boxes, so that's, that's nice. You don't have to pick up another device and start up Netflix, so, you know, there's an improvement there. Um, so, you know, overall. Uh, now, the thing we lost in this switch was, was Show Me, which does have a, uh, apparently uh, has a slightly better... Uh, catalog, but given that Xiaomi has a year or so head start on Crave, that's not surprising. Uh, so, yeah, okay, fine. Um, that's not a big deal. Uh, we, can, we can live with things. The on-demand offerings through TELUS are slightly better uh, from what I could see uh, for the major networks, though it's kind of a wash, really. Uh, so generally, you know, picture quality has been loads better. Uh, I noticed that immediately. The picture quality was loads better. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's the way the TELUS network functions that they, they actually have more bandwidth. They can shove the television stuff down. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, the picture quality is loads better. Uh, we still have a little bit of a slow response from the boxes, but it's not near as bad as the Shaw one. Uh, where you could see the Shaw one, it would paint something, unpaint it, paint it, unpaint it, paint it, unpaint it, and paint it. You could watch it updating the screen step by step. It's not so bad with the Telus ones. Uh, 
so the picture quality is substantially better. So that on a lot of the channels, so I'm thinking that they're not compressing things near as badly, or they've got the bandwidth to handle it and less interference. Uh, so generally, things are better. So here's the mind blower. We had Internet 60 with Shaw, which is like 60 down and three and a half up or something like that. And, you know, on that, on my, the VPN connection back to my work stuff, uh, I was getting a round trip ping time of about 130 milliseconds. And that means I had quite a bit of slowness doing anything because every TCP connection has to do a three-way handshake. This way, back, and then that way again to establish a full connection. That's three round trip times. So... 400 and yeah 400 plus milliseconds just to establish a TCP connection that's half a second and that's if no packets go missing and everything goes quickly so you know there was some slowness there and because of the latency TCP connections would ramp up quite slowly for for data transfer speed so they'd start out quite slow and wouldn't speed up very quickly because it, it, you know, you've got that round trip time to uh, that you have to account for. Oh, I, I made an error. The uh, it's one and a half times the round trip time for uh, the three-way handshake. Uh, so uh, I guess that'd be two hundred and some milliseconds. But still, that's a quarter second. And it still causes a slow ramp up for TCP. So, it, you know, things take a while to ramp up to full transfer speed. So with TELUS, uh, which is ADSL uh, in this case, uh, they don't have fiber to the home uh, in this area, so it's ADSL. Okay, so that's fine. I don't care what how it comes in as long as it does what it purports to do. So... Uh, I checked, we're getting the speed that TELUS says we're getting. We, we went with Internet 25, which is 25 down and, what was it, 5 up? Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, Internet 25. So we cut our Internet speed by more than half. Okay? Raw speed. But here's the thing. My round-trip ping time dropped to about 60 milliseconds. And when I or 50 something actually, I drop, and when I drop off the VPN, it doesn't drop all that much more. So I'm not getting a huge hit for the VPN. So I'm getting a substantially faster overall performance with a slower internet connection. I have a couple suspicions on why that is. Uh, one of them is a slightly better upload speed, so that will make a difference. The other is, it's a single channel on the ADSL, not two channels bonded, so that will make a difference as well. But I think the big thing is buffer sizes increasing latency on the Shaw network, on the cable network. Um, I suspect that, Shaw, that TELUS has smaller buffering on their network, so the buffer bloat problem is causing less issues. Do a search for buffer bloat if you're interested. Uh, there's some... Uh, fascinating uh, results on that. So overall, the internet performance is better. So the television better, the internet's better, the telephone line's a telephone line. And problems I was having with YouTube have disappeared. Um, slow response from uh, stuff at work has disappeared. Uh, websites are loading faster. Uh, generally, all around, things are working a lot better. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's something. And here's the thing. Uh, while we do have less than half the internet speed, I think we've got better performance. So we haven't actually downgraded our internet by going to a lower speed. We've got better performance overall. So... Even though we lowered the uh, internet speed, so that change, that means that we're not quite comparing apples to apples when I tell you we had a very substantial 20% uh, reduction in our bill. Uh, when I tell you that, 
uh, so it's not quite apples to apples, but I tell you that, one, TV quality is better, and two, internet quality is better, and the bill is lower. I think we generally came out on top here. Now, granted, they've only had us as the customer for a day so far. Uh, so, you know, they have plenty of time to screw up. And granted, this is on a two-year contract. So we didn't, so they're, they're providing the equipment as part of the contract. Uh, so granted, we, uh, we had the two-year contract. We didn't have the contract term with Shaw. But from what I've seen so far, I don't think there's going to be any particular motivation to switch back. Um, maybe there will be when some changes from the CRTC come down later this year, uh, at last word. But I'm not, I, I'm not thinking that there's going to be a substantial difference between TELUS and Shaw as a result of those. So, you know, there you go. You know, it's... Uh, uh, Shaw sat back with their thumbs up their butt and they haven't actually kept up with technology. They haven't made sure their gear works properly. Tell us, in the meantime, started out with lousy gear and has worked their way up. They've improved it steadily over time. Uh, and they're, uh, from what I've heard from a third hand from people that have tell us that recent software updates were actually an improvement. So, yay! Uh, so we'll see. Uh, we've got two years uh, during which uh, tell us will either screw up or they won't. So, and so far the communication from tell us has been way better. Uh, you know. Uh, we did get a call from Shaw trying to save the account, and uh, the Shaw person was lying out their butt, I guess, because they uh, they insisted that Shaw has fiber. They don't. It's a coaxial cable. Uh, so, no. You know, things like that. And they tried to insist that TELUS was this or that or the other, you know, whatever, No. Uh, we weren't having any. We'd already made the decision. It was a considered decision. Uh, you know, there was no pressure tactic, no sales tactic. Uh, so generally, hey, it's been generally a pleasant experience. Some th you know things that weren't going quite right. You know, they did deal with them. So you know, hey, great. Now I'm, I'm gonna make a one a couple of comments on the actual technology coming into the house. Uh, and this, you know, so Shaw's stuff all comes in over a uh, coaxial cable. Uh, so that's a copper wire. And it's basically two wires, shield and the core. Uh, it's, and, uh, you know, anyone who actually knows this stuff is going to jump on me about how, no, that's wrong, but uh, never mind. Uh, that's, it's still a copper wire, okay? It's a transmission line, it's a copper wire. Probably a copper wire, anyway. Telesis comes in on a single twisted pair. Again, copper wire. Now this is, essentially, you've got the same medium, just one's a balanced transmission line, one's an unbalanced transmission line. So, uh, you know, there's no reason they can't carry the same stuff. There really is no reason they can't. Uh, so, uh, now, with the Shaw stuff, you need a modem to deal with the phone line, because it has to demultiplex the phone line, and then you know, it's probably voice over IP over a, a private channel. Uh, and then you need a, need a modem for the internet uh, connection. Uh, and then, of course, a television signal comes in there as well. Uh, now, on the Shaw network, the first class citizen is the television signal. Uh, and everything else is shoehorned into that. On the TELUS network, the original citizen of the wire is the voice phone line, the analog phone line. And on top of that, they've multiplexed ADSL and the television stuff. Now, I note 
that the entire sum total of equipment from TELUS to disambiguate all of this is a single filter where the phone line comes in, a single filter with three outputs. Telephone line, uh, television, and internet. Right? Good. So, basically, they're using different bands in their transmission to deal with that. And I'm sure Shaw is doing the same thing. Uh, so you've got, it's the same thing they used to do with ADSL, except it's a three-way filter, the splitter thing, not a two-way one. Okay, so great. Uh, so there's this one little tiny filter thing where it comes in, doesn't need power. Okay. And then the ADSL modem is over where all the other networking gear is. It needs power. Okay. That's fair. Okay, so you got the ADSL modem over there. Good, it's operating, it does its thing, uh, and you get your internet connection. The television thing with Shaw needs a central unit for the PVR and tuners. TELUS has one of the set-top boxes serve as that unit. What that means is you have one less piece of gear that has to be around to make everything work. Uh, it's one less thing that can go wrong, and it means it's easier to access. So with the TELUS setup, there's less equipment around the place. There's no central box making noise with fans and everything. And the central unit for the Shaw Gateway looks like a rebranded PC. Um, so that may be where a lot, a lot of the problems were coming from lately. Maybe it needed to be defragged or something. It's probably running Windows. Uh, the TELUS stuff is running Windows CE. Uh, but, you know, as long as it works, I, I, I really don't care in this case. Uh, so, great. So basically, we've got the same basic technology coming in the house either way. It's a physical wire, copper wire. One's a balanced transmission line, one's an unbalanced transmission line. It's, that's really the difference. So, uh, if you can do 25 or 50 meg megabits on uh, the coaxial cable from Shaw, no reason you can't do that on the twisted pair from TELUS. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, so... Hey, uh, that's it. Uh, the The result of the switch, uh, the switch went uh, remarkably smoothly, actually. Uh, there's less gear sitting around the electrical panel where everything comes into the house, just a filter now. And there's a lot less gear sitting around at the uh, network area. Uh, I've got much faster internet response time on a connection that's... Uh, 40% of the speed, 45% of the speed of the old one. Uh, and the television picture quality so far has been substantially better. Uh, so while this ramble has turned into an indictment of Shaw and praise for TELUS, uh, you know, I, I can only call it like I'm seeing it from the services I have received so far. And I have to say, so far I'm impressed with Talus. Uh, and I am so far from impressed with, uh, with Shaw. Shaw's uh, service the past six months has been so far below terrible that it's not even in hailing distance of the scale, let alone terrible on the scale. So, you know, Shaw, you need to smarten up. Tell us, don't screw up. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. Anyway, uh, I do go on, on a bit, don't I, on these things. Anyway, uh, that's uh, it on, on this ramble. Uh, I just uh, felt that uh, it was worth putting out there that, uh, you know, 
uh, I would currently recommend that you do not go with Shaw. Uh, it's that's really what it comes down to. Anyway, uh, that's my my ramble on switching internet providers. Uh, so that's all for this time. Uh, if you stuck around this long, thanks for watching.